I'm back again. And uh, we got the background again. This Hazard lookalike brother with the purple on. I'm not sure who he is. Still not sure. I don't know that I'm ever going to find out. I'm not even entirely sure he's a person in football. Also, look at those boots to the guy behind him, though, quickly before we start this video. Look at those boots. What's going on with them boots, bruh? Look at that boot. It looks like a flipping dinosaur foot. What is that? Just looks odd. What is he wearing on his feet, bruh? He needs to check himself. That guy with the light blue socks, he needs to check himself. Wearing them fucking remix slippers. But I wanted to talk about Gary Lineker. We've obviously all seen he's been suspended by the BBC for comparing the Conservative Party, specifically their immigration policy, to the Nazis, right? And there are two points to address. There's the stupidity of the comment, which is obvious. I mean... There's, I can't, I'm really trying to wrap my head around how you can compare the policy to anything of Nazi Germany. I'm really like, I'm severely struggling with that. How you can, I mean, I assume his point, maybe I'm wrong, I assume his point is that they're being racist. Which I've always found interesting for a whole host of reasons. I mean, A, coming from him, I mean, he, he, he probably has a massive house. I've never seen it, but I can imagine you know, he does. I bet if I looked it up, I'd see that he does. right? But he doesn't house any of these immigrants, illegal immigrants himself, of course. He, he, I'm sure he'll allow them to... You know, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he allowed them to clean his house for 9 50 an hour. That, that, I'm sure he's well in favour of. But actually letting them have a room in his house for free? Housing him like he expects you to do? who makes significantly less than he does, probably, is something that he won't do. He, he'll, he'll expect you to do it, not him. But, I mean, this is a man... I, I can't see the comparison, to be frank with you. Does he not understand that immigration, like limiting immigration, as far as I understand from Rishi Sunak's policy, and I don't really want to defend Rishi Sunak, quite frankly, or the Conservative Party for a whole host of reasons we can maybe discuss another time but does he not get that limiting immigration includes countries that are like dominantly white more so than this country it would include places like poland and romania and you know so on and so forth you get the picture right predominantly white countries it would include that right does he get that illegal immigration is illegal immigration he doesn't say black illegal immigration or brown illegal immigration it doesn't say that it says illegal immigration of people who are white black black brown it doesn't it doesn't matter i don't know no, does he not understand that if he doesn't then i'm severely concerned but you know should he should he be rehired is ultimately the question and quite frankly i would say yes i would say he should be rehired i think that I don't like the idea that companies can turn around and fire people because of what they said off the clock. I don't, I don't like it because it's, it's created a culture now of corporate dominance of your life. I mean, people, like, we have private citizens now who hide their social medias entirely because, in part because they're afraid. Even I'm, I'm guilty of doing this right now. Right. I don't say my name or my, you know, show my face, mostly because, you know, I don't want to, if I was to ever... If I needed another job, say, if I wanted to, this is this is one avenue I like to pursue. I want I wanted to start this channel, but if I wanted to do something else, I wouldn't want people to hear what I've said on this channel. Not because I think any of it is wrong or disgraceful or disgusting, but because I understand that some of the woke morons that run a lot of the companies where I would need to progress my career would not hire me if they saw what I was saying. They would. They just wouldn't. They wouldn't. They might consider it because my channel, obviously, right now is not very big. But if it was to grow, they would know and they wouldn't consider hiring me. They wouldn't even consider talking to me. So, you know, that's just kind of just the way it is. And it's, it, it speaks to this corporate dominance of your life, where they just feel like they have to insert themselves into politics and into your life. Let Gary Lineker tweet what he wants to tweet, even if I believe and I do that. It's stupid. And I think it is. And we could delve into more detail about this 
another time if that's what you know people who watch this if anybody watches this wants to do we can delve into that another time it's fine but i mean the central question i wanted to ask is should he be right and the answer is yes i mean i i from what i understand the bbc's reasoning is political impartiality which I find so hilarious because I'm not the only one who noticed the fact that he's been tweeting like politically partisan stuff for years now, if I'm not mistaken, right? I'm not wrong in saying that he's been tweeting things that are very much to the left for a long, especially on the immigration issue. He's been tweeting this stuff for a long, long time. I'm not entirely sure what, like, what, what their point is here. He's been tweeting this stuff for years and been getting away with it. The BBC have not said nothing about it. From what I know, they haven't suspended him before. So what? What? What is it now that has really pushed it? He said the Conservative Party are Nazi. Well, yes, the comment is dumb, but it's not something he should be suspended and potentially fired over. That's just stupid. Let the man tweet what he wants to tweet. What's wrong with you people? I mean, seriously, the BBC pretending to be politically impartial now. I mean, come on. Please. I mean, I'd have to. I'd have to disagree. It's my opinion. I can't prove it, but I'd have to politely disagree if that's what they're claiming now that they're a politically impartial organization. Right. Okay. If that it, it's one of those things where it's just like, if that's what you say, then whatever. Can't be bothered to fight you on that. But. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just so silly. Why do you want to control what he says in his tweets? Why do companies feel like they need to control everything and know everything? And get stuck into every part of your bloody life? It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. It really is. And it gets on my bloody nerves. All these companies who want to know everything about you. Who want to know exactly what you're saying at all times. Even when you're miles off the clock. They want to know what you're doing, what you're saying. What your opinions are. They want to know everything about you, not because they care about you, but because they care about themselves. They care about protecting themselves and their image, right, from the woke mobs that might come for them. Otherwise, they couldn't care less about you personally. They just care about what your opinions off the clock might do to them. It's selfish and it's disgusting and I can't stand it. So let, let him say what he wants to say, bro. Even if it is stupid, I think it is. Some people don't. And that's, you know, that's their opinion. But just let him say what he wants to say. I mean, what's wrong with you people trying to control his speech now? Tell him what he can and can't say when he's not working. It's a, it's a farce. These corporations need to stop this stuff, this social media stalking that they do. And I understand they can, saying the BBC stalked his social media, I mean, the man has probably, the man has a shit ton of followers. They probably didn't need to stalk his social media, really, to find this out. But this is, this is I mean, this is the point to compare companies in general. Stop stalking people's social media. Stop forcing people to hire their accounts in private and try and shield everything they post as best as possible and filter everything they post. Because they don't want to be dragged into HR and potentially fired over this. Just stop it. It's annoying and it's dumb. Stop with the trying to take full control of people's lives. It's sickening. It really is sickening. Let people say what they want to say off the clock. On the clock when they're working for you. When you're paying them you can tell them what to do. For the most part, obviously you can't take it too far, but you can tell them what they're supposed to be doing and they should be doing it because they're, you're paying them. But when they are not working, stop trying to control them. Stop trying to do all this stupid crap. Just stop it. It's really aggravating. It helps nobody. I mean, my answer, I don't know what other people think, let me know in the comments, but what people think, but my answer is, just hire him back and stop playing silly games, right? Let him tweet his part as a nonsense. We all, know he, we all know he's not politically neutral anyways. And there are very few people, right, a lot of people suspect that the BBC is not politically neutral. Everybody kind of thinks that already. I mean, 
I don't know. I don't watch the BBC really that often anymore. I'm just telling you what other people think of it, right? And I suspect that they they can't really be politically neutral because their kind of whole thing depends on, I suppose, lack of neutrality. I mean, isn't that how they survive? Because if they spend their whole days blasting the Conservative Party to the moon and back, right? They need the government in order so that they can survive because they understand that if they, if the BBC did what they should be doing, right, what everybody else does, which is moving to a standard where they have a subscription service or they're on Freeview and they get, you know, the amount of money they make for views, they understand that the BBC would dwindle and potentially die because it wouldn't... Yeah, they rely on TV licensing, which is frankly fraudulent. I mean, the idea that I can watch live TV that has literally nothing to do with the BBC and still have to pay them anyways is farcical. It's farcical. It really is. They knew that if they moved to a subscription service, they'd have something similar to what happened to CNN in America with CNN Plus, right? That thing died in like a month, didn't it? With barely anybody watching. They understand they'd suffer a similar, maybe not as drastic, but a similar fate. If they did. So they, their survival kind of, I would argue, could clinch upon being politically favourable to whoever's in power. But, let's by the by. By the by, they don't really need to... One thing I can tell you is they don't really owe any loyalty right, to people, working class people who aren't in the commons. They don't see... You know, I don't know that they owe any loyalty to you. They owe loyalty to the people in power. In Parliament, those two things are separate. Voters and MPs are quite blatantly, in my opinion, separate. So they owe loyalty to MPs to keep them on their side. But so the political impartiality point is silly. This this is I don't know who the Conservative Party pulled the strings, if anybody. But just just hire the man back and let let, let him do match of the day. I don't watch match of the day. But let just let him do it. Let him come back and, I mean, don't even, don't make him apologise. We'd all just like to move on from this silliness. If anything, you lot should have should apologise for trying to police his speech. Out of working hours. Even on working hours, really. And just move on. If anybody should be apologising to you, leave the man alone, let him tweet what he wants to tweet. And yeah, if, if anybody has a differing opinion, I, I, I'd like to hear it. I understand the counterpoints, which is, you know, that if it was kind of the inverse and somebody said, you know, somebody compared, you know, said, oh, for example, if he came out and said something like, uh, affirmative action plans are racist, that he'd be instantly banned and nobody would come to his defense and the council mob would, right, would rightfully, as they would claim, get him kicked off. I get that. But I don't think we should do tit for tat exchanges. I think it's silly. But if you disagree, if you have any other opinions, let me know. And uh, yeah, just hire him back and stop with the nonsense. Catch you next time, people. See ya.